of Bam Bam on the Red Red Gas Gas. Oh, yeah, with that cool baseball bat. Yeah, the baseball bat. Sick, isn't it? You see him on the trials bike? Yeah. Sick, bro. <laughs> yeah, I posted it to the page. Yeah, sick. Yeah. Anyway, uh, first things first, I want one. That thing looks good. A gas gas? Yeah, but I've been thinking about getting one anyway. Oh, you mean that red KTM? Yeah, I don't care. That Whatever. was exactly where I was going with that. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. The bike looks pretty good. Um, it does. It does. Especially with those black rims. See. Yeah, yeah. We really didn't get to see a lot of Barsha riding that thing. Like, raw clips. It was all kind of cool shit. Um, they got a video of Mosman, though, on motocross action. How'd he look? He, well, he wasn't riding Supercross. He was just riding out of Glen Helen. And it looks like he was kind of just shaking the bike down. So, gotcha. Not really. The bike looks good, though. For hours, yeah. Thing, so. okay. Yeah, pretty much. Can I can I ask a question? <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, you know, I'm just curious to see how Barsh is going to be on that thing. Um, hearing the rumblings around, I've already taken a tranny out of it. And, and oh, I already blew up a motor. You heard the transmission? I already blew up a motor. Yeah, nice. well, it was I, I a tranny, both. but yeah, he blew it up uh, the first day he rode it. Yep. Which is really weird because uh, yeah, KTM's not really known for that. <laughs> well, I think with him though, that being, has he ever had a hydraulic clutch? Uh, no. Yeah, so I think that probably would have something to do with it, just how hard he probably is on the clutch, maybe. Or, yeah, I mean, maybe that's it. It's yeah, Could it's be. interesting. I don't know. Does he? Well, hopefully they figured out because I think um, obviously we know Barsha can ride the soft stuff really good. Yeah, um, and we have seen him ride the hard stuff really good. Uh, I think back to his Honda days, the rookie year, he, or maybe yeah, maybe it was the rookie year he came out in Glendale or Phoenix back then and and put the whooping on those boys on the hard pack stuff. So, uh, I think having that flex is going to help him. Yeah. I think that bike's going to be good. I think having the uh, the flex of that chassis, we don't need to get into it because everybody talks about it, you know, just the way Barsha rides the bike. Uh, I think coming off that Yamaha, it's obviously going to be a learning. It's going to be an adjustment, especially with the, the delivery of the, you know, the power of the motor compared to where that, you know, that fucking gas gas is going to rev to the moon, which is also going to help him too. Um, but I just still... I keep going back to, I think that chassis is going to help him out a lot, you know, and, and like you just said, you know, we know he's really good on the soft stuff, you know, he is good on the hard stuff, but he struggled over the years. I just think that that bike is going to help him out a lot. It's going to, it's going to take away some of his flaws, not everything, you know, him still hitting over rev is, there's nothing going to ever change that. But, um, if they get that bike dialed in, I, I expect big things out of him. I don't know how much better, like as far as at the end of the season in points, he's going to be. But I think that he could be battling for more wins on that bike because it's definitely going to be better than the big piece of shit he just came off of. I was just yeah, and I another thing too, Justin, um, more like the team atmosphere. So he, I mean, obviously he's been big dog before. Like he is the man on the team. Yeah, but they're basically building this whole team around him. Um, so I think that might be something that'll play in his favor. Like, hey, I have all this just because of me. Like, I'm going to go out and perform kind of thing. Yeah. What were you going to say, Travis? You uh, sound like you had a couple things to say. I, I do, I do. So does anyone think this is going to be, like, a big game changer for him? Or is this just going to be normal? Barsha switches teams. Everyone gets all hyped up. He comes out. He wins the opening round because that's just what he does now, apparently. And then we go right back to where he's been, where, like, in six weeks, oh, the bike sucks, the bike's garbage, or he hurts himself, and then he's off, and then he comes back, and then the bike's garbage. Or, like, the, I mean, are we going to see the same, or do we really think this is going to be a game changer? Because in my opinion, I don't think this is going to be a game changer. I think we're going to see a lot of the same things we've seen. We've We've seen, like, just in the time I've been back in the sport here since whatever it was, I think 14 or whatever, because I think when I came back was like his last year on Honda. <laughs> when I came back, he says. <laughs> it was his last year on Honda. And so we went from Honda to JGR Yamaha. And, oh, so good. Oh, I love the bike and oh, whatever. He comes out and he does pretty decent. And then it kind of fades off. And then, oh, we're going to get on Suzuki's. And oh, man, this is so great. And we fade off. And then we get back on Yamaha. And, oh, this is so great. And then we just fade right off. And then we get into the contract year and we, you know, come out with something to prove and we do something. And then as soon as we get a contract, we just fade off. And so, I mean, I don't know, man. I well, I hope it gets seeing better. those careers ending soon. 
Yeah, well, that's the thing, too, is like I like I was having this conversation with Tom Cooper a little while ago is that I think he's too late in his career for a real game changer move like it ta- it it would take a lot for him to really have a game changer. And I don't think changing brands is a game changer at this point. All right, so he won. He won one race this past year, right? In Supercross, it was one. It was just a one, right? Uh, sure. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so he was a one, and I think you know, even though Utah was a disaster for whatever reason, I don't know if he just wasn't putting in time during the break or whatever. We'll not get into that, but it was just a failure from where he was because he was, he, even though mathematically he was in it, he wasn't really in it. But as far as the, the chase for the title, um, I think that. Because to touch on what Cole said about the team atmosphere, it's a lot different than Yamaha. Because even though we joke, it is a KT, it's a brand new team, TLD, but it's a brand new you know manufacturer as far as like who they're going to be dealing with on a day to day basis. It's going to be different, you know. TLD, other than when they had Townley and Mookie, they've never really had a guy of Barsha's status as far as a 450 guy. Um, so I think that if he wins one this past year. I think that that program and that bike, jump it up to two. Give them maybe a position better in the points. But as to your point, Travis, no. I don't think it's going to be a game changer. I just think, though, I keep going back to the bike. I think he's going to be fighting the bike a lot less, which maybe means you see Barsha a little bit more happier throughout the year. So maybe we don't hear as much as there's a, there's a lot of drama going on. So, no, if, if you want a hard answer, no. He's not going to win a championship. Is he going to be battling for more wins? Yeah, maybe. But I can't really see it being a lot different. I just don't think you're going to be seeing him as pissed off throughout the year, if that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with what Travis says, too, um, just because that's just the, it's the revolving wheel of how harsh it's always been. Yeah. Um, but, again, kind of branching off a little bit of what you said, Justin, about being TLD, never having a guy of that stature. Yep. Um, i got to feel like whatever he asks for, he's going to get it. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I'm afraid of, and I just don't like this guy, and I even said it in the group text, is is he going to butt heads with Tyler Queef? <laughs> is he going to butt heads with Keith? Is he going to butt heads with him? Because, I mean, you got two totally different personalities, and let's be honest, we all know Barsha really doesn't like to be told what to do. And Keith, he's kind of a no-nonsense guy, and he kind of has a stick up his ass all the time. So is that going to be an issue? I mean... That's the only thing that I could see where there's going to be drama throughout the year. But if they don't butt heads and they don't really talk to each other, which is fucking weird, team manager and rider not talking to each other, but if they don't get into it, then I just think that you won't hear as much of, oh, he hates the bike, he hates the bike. Because, I, like I said, that bike I think is going to be a lot better than what he just came off of. Um, but as far as, yeah, big changes, as far as results, not a lot. Just maybe one more win, which is good, I guess, you know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to hear what he says on uh, he's on Paul Trip night. So, oh yeah, that's right. He was he's on there tonight talking about it. Yeah, so well, it'll be interesting to listen to that this week and kind of see what he has to say. But I mean, back to what Travis said again. He's always like, "Oh, bike's so sick, bike's so sick," and then it slowly goes downhill. So, you think after his contract's over with them, he's done? Yeah, he's got a two year deal, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So he'll be. So he'll be 30 turning 31 then, if that's the case. Yeah, I think he probably only has two more years. Possibly Europe. We thought maybe we'd see that, but Uh, I'd like to see it. I think it'd be cool. I mean, it would be cool to see, but I'm doubtful. I have... Oh, yeah, me too. People have asked, and he hasn't really said, yeah, that's what I'm going to do type thing or really wanting to do. So, yeah, I'm doubtful on that. And at that age, too, you're not going to go to Europe and have success in the first year. No. You'll be there three, four years, so. Okay. No, not so, at all. So can we can we talk about their 250 guys a little bit too? How I mean, okay, so sure. How does Rockstar get rid of Mosman? Uh well, Blair kind of bad paid money. <laughs> well, Blair kind of talked about this on his 250. I guess you could call it preview show. Okay, I must have um, missed this part. Or whatever. I don't know if it's a preview. So you listen to it, right? Yeah. Well, he made the comment. Think about it. You know. KTM, Husky, Gas Gas, it's basically just swapping one dude to another. But obviously okay. Husky didn't get anything in return. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so, I mean, let's let's be honest though. Like we we keep talking about it, and it is a you know red case, young gas, gas, whatever. But like that's really all I can think of, and that it is. It's just Husky taking one guy and moving them over to their redheaded stepchild brother. But I don't know. I mean, that's the only thing I think of. It's the only thing that makes sense. Um, but it's I don't know. I mean, is it is it going to be any less of you know, is the bike going to be worse? No. So, I don't know. I think it's a bad move on Husky getting rid of him in that sense because I think they could have just given Jaleek Swole to them, but whatever. Yeah, but I also think they're looking at they need a guy to represent that. Um, yeah. You know, Pierce Down in the Brown and Jaleek Brown Swole on the team. Whoa, whoa, um, that's, whoa. That's whoa. why, that, yeah. Let, whoa, whoa Jaleek is Brown. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. That's that's my other thing is how do we how do we land on Pierce Brown as our other guy? Like well, yeah, see, they need them in over there, they need a guy that's gonna be toward the front on a gas gas. Um, see, and this kind of is what I was bullshit guys for a brand new band, brand. Well, well, this is what I was talking about earlier in the group text about, you know, guys not having rides. Like, are are we seriously like just gonna overlook the fact that Heart Track doesn't have a ride right now? Like, are you kidding me? Like well, I know is, that Brandon didn't What's up? This is something that, that uh, what's his nuts, Blair brought up too on his podcast is, okay, so now you have this new team. They have a 250 and a 450 deal, but you only got one 250 rider. So you on each coast, you've got one dude, and if he gets hurt, what, you're bringing in somebody to to substitute for him? or What, the, what team is this? Gas Gas. Gas Gas. They got a, they got a big dog. No, no. They no, no. Have... Travis is saying one West Coast guy and one East Coast guy. So if one guy gets hurt, kind of the same thing that Honda's doing with Jet and Hunter. Well, there's rumblings of a second guy next to Max Voland, and maybe they'll make a spot there for hard drive. That's. I'll just say that if Brandon doesn't end up with a ride, that's some bullshit. I mean, I will. I will go on record as agreeing with Daniel Blair on this whole 250 thing with. Husky and KTM and Gas Gas of, okay, so you just took the team basically that you had and you just spread the shit out farther. Like, you didn't add, you added another team, but you didn't add any spots. I mean, there should be two more spots on Gas Gas. What is, who does Husky have on their roster right now? RJ, Robertson, and Swole. So you got three there, so you're going to run two on one coast and one on the other? Well, and that's another thing, too, is, is Husky has one championship contender in RJ and a rookie in, in Robertson and a guy in Swole who just fucking sucks. <laughs> Whoa, don't hold any punches back there. Tell us how you really I'm feel. I'm not going to. Jesus Christ. I'm not going to. Um, this is Jordan Bailey all over again. Yeah, so anyway, so, yeah, so this, like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Well, and then and then you go to KTM, and KTM's running Max one 250 guy who hasn't even ever rode a big bike. And like never even raced an A race. Yeah, never even raced an A race, and you're just gonna throw him in there all by himself, like with no other 250 help. And uh, you're... I think they'll have somebody next to him. Okay, but then again, I think that yeah. I yeah. mean, what are what are they expecting? Like, are we really just gonna go team tactics from all three brands built together? Like, is that our is that our plan here? Because like I don't I don't understand it. Like I don't understand Honda either with the keeping hunter and jet and like that's it we're running one east one west like what the hell or are you going to run both of them on the east or i'm sorry both of them on the west and then the east coast is going to be these other honda teams like I, what are you doing i don't understand it yeah as far as uh this whole situation going on with ktm husky and gas gas um i am very surprised in the sense that because we all know this is actually coming up from the ktm brass bosses it's a little weird because they don't normally run their program like this. And still, I think having Max Volan as your one get one guy, no matter what coast he rides, is just it's a terrible idea because you're basically throwing him into the lion's den. Because if he goes out there and he gets hurt, it's going to let KTM look real stupid. Or if he goes out there and he doesn't get hurt, but he just gets his ass handed to him, like you're just you're stunting the kid's growth as a rider because he never raced an A race. He literally like just came off with them all over again. Yeah, exactly. Like, what do you think is going to happen to that kid's psyche if he goes out to whatever round he rides at and he goes out and he barely qualifies? And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if anybody thinks he's going to go out there and just start putting it to everybody, no matter what coast he's on, you're fooling yourself. 
just because he fucking killed it in, in the schoolboy classes at Loretta's and he looked good for a few rounds, a few straight rhythm rounds. Like, no. I, I don't understand what KTM and all these teams are thinking, but to your point, Travis, about, like, the way the riders – I think that even though it's all under, like, KTM, I think that each guy on each team – secretly is going to have trying to prove a point like RJ is going to want to go out there and if he's racing against Bozeman and Max Volander or whoever he's going to want to be the top dog or vice versa Bozeman's going to want to prove a point no matter depending on who he's racing against from Husky you know so I, I don't know I, I think it's a shit show to be honest with you though and I completely agree with Daniel Blair like how do you have this many teams and you have that many low rider I, like, I mean no I, did, I just did quick math in my head they should have seven more rides between those teams seven yeah you should have at least two in each coast yeah for each, just right off the bat like, like, two, like there eight, should be yeah. seven rides there there should be two more at honda so i mean you should have nine rides total in the 250 class more which if we added nine more rides i mean all of a sudden all these guys that are over here on the sidelines basically looking in that don't have a ride i mean all of a sudden we take care of them and some i mean uh, okay, great. And that's not even – we haven't even gotten to, like, JGR and what the hell no one knows what's going on there is happening. Um, so, I mean, you're talking, like, all of a sudden we could solve some of the problems in the world here as far as the Moto Gods go of, like, dudes not having rides. But instead we're fucking around with basically what – did, what did we say we had? Three, four, five, six. We have six rides between three fucking teams. Which is unreal. Star's got six guys on one fucking coast. Well, it looks like uh, you know more of these uh, more of these manufacturers or more of these sponsors need to start getting in the cocaine business, like.